So after doing Inventor tutorials for four whole years, it's only just occurred to me that I haven't even covered eye properties. <laughs> They're pretty essential, mate. They really are. Uh, so if you don't know about eye properties, you probably should. You don't have to use them, but there are many gains to be had from utilizing eye properties to their fullest. So I'm going to just take you through what they are at a basic level, mate. And if you're thinking to yourself, mate, shush, shtum, that alloy though, that, that alloy, how do I get this wheel? Right, head on over to my channel, do a search for the Autodesk Inventor BMW M4 rim tutorial, and you can see me model that from start to finish and follow along if you want. Right, eye properties are a set of unique properties to inventor models. Every single inventor model ever has eye properties. And to be honest, I don't think they've changed ever since day one as far as i know i don't remember ever seeing a new eye property appear uh, so every model you've got will have eye properties you've just probably never typed anything into them if you don't know what they are and to access eye properties what you do there's numerous ways of accessing them you can right click on the node up here in the browser and go to eye properties you can click file here and go to eye properties there's, there's a couple of other ways but either either way you'll get to this box here so there's a number of tabs along the top and i'm only really going to cover the tabs that are actually meaningful because some of them are just read only information or information that just doesn't actually do anything it doesn't go anywhere it doesn't have any value at all uh, the first tab, general, standard Windows properties, when it was created, the file, when it was modif last modified and last accessed and just standard Windows information. Uh, the summary tab, and this is a good example of information that doesn't actually go anywhere. If your company wants to utilize this as a policy, then you can do uh, keywords and comments. If you want to kind of standardize what people type in, pro you can do. But every place I've ever worked at, these have just never been touched. They're always blank. The bulk of inventor's eye properties are always on the project tab, though. This is the meat and bones of the eye properties. So the first one is location. That's just read only. You can't type into that. Same goes with file subtype. It's just a, a property that inventor has to identify what kind of file this is. So when it goes into a document management system, it's telling that system that, hey, this is a 3D modeling file. Whereas a drawing would say it's a, it's a drawing. Uh, part number. This is the start of the really useful eye properties. Part number is a pretty useful eye property. It's very important. It's normally your company's internal part number. So if you're if you're trying to identify this in your stock and you you identify and create and allocate a part number to what it is you're creating, which is pretty standard practice in manufacturing, then you can type in a part number here. Part number by default will be exactly the same as your file name. So if we head on over to a new file and then hit save and we'll create a new part called PT1234 and then go to its eye properties, what you'll see is the part number is PT1234. A uh, couple of things just to be aware of. If you do a save as and you rename it to, I don't know, GH1234, head on over to the eye properties, Inventor will automatically update the part number to be GH1234. However, this is definitely worth knowing. This is not waffle. This ain't waffle, mate. This is really important because this will trip you up. If you manually rename the file, which is something people do, right? We'll call this HH1234 and then open up the model. This is one of the occasions where Inventor will not update the part number. It'll stay as the old one. So manually renaming of files will not update your part number. So yes, part number by default is the same as the file name. Some companies have that as a policy. File name and part number should always be the same. It just makes parts easier to find if it's named the part number. But if you don't do that, a lot of companies don't. It'll model this and it'll say, right, this file is called wheel. But internally, we identify it as the part number 666M. Uh, and that's the part number. Stock number. Right, this is where you start to get into the realms of optional I properties. A lot of companies just won't use stock number, but you can utilize it for something like the supplier's part number. So our internal part number, if we're if we're BMW and we're buying in the rim, because BMW, I assume they don't cast their own wheels, they'll buy the wheels in from a supplier, uh, then that supplier may have their own uh, part number that is in a catalog that you say, right, I want your part number PP-098-65, right? But Internally, we identified as that on the manufacturer's website. They identified as that, for example. You can do that, uh, or you can do it the other way around. It's up to you. It's whatever your company policy wants to be. But either way, it's all free text, and you can type in whatever you want. Description, extraordinarily important, is the description. This is a property along with part number uh, and stock number, actually, which is called up when you place this part into an assembly. 
and then you look at the bill of materials you'll see the description the description describes what the part is mate <laughs> obviously that's pretty important so the description of this part is uh, 666m alloy m4 gts but it is free text you can type in whatever you want into here the more information the better some companies have standards on what the part on what the description should be for example the description should always start with uh i don't know alloy or something or if it's a, if it's a bolt start with the word bolt uh, and it just helps people identify and search for them better in document management systems but it is free text but it's highly highly recommended that you do make use of the description and be as descriptive as possible the revision i property uh if you're going to manually if you're going to manually manage revisions in inventor then to be fair you're doing it wrong you should use a document management system like vault or another document management system but you can manually type in revision letters or numbers into uh, into this value uh, you, you, know, you can type in whatever you want i mean there is it is just free text uh, so that's up to you but when this thing's bought and a revision is made it's up issued then you will have to remember to explicitly come back in and manually type in the next letter or number uh, right project uh, i've never worked in a company that uses the project but it does have it does actually have a pretty good use if this this part is used in a project which it is that's why you're making it because there'll be a project on that requires you to model this part then it would make sense to type in the name of the project into this value why well m mostly when you put this part into a document management system i'm constantly referencing this mythical document management system because it vault or does vault uses these properties um you can use vault to search say for example you could build a search query show me all files in our vault that are used in this project and it'll as long as this project name is typed into this project i probably the document management system will show you all parts from that project it's just a useful property for, for searching and querying uh, data on uh, designer uh yeah i mean just initials name whatever engineer i've never worked in a place that differentiates that and even uses those but uh i don't know bob <laughs> I mean, well, yeah, I'll just leave that blank. Authority, cards on the table, not a clue, mate. I don't know what authority means. Uh, I've do I can't even think of a use case for authority. Uh, I don't know, <laughs> respect my, I, I don't, I really don't know. Cost center, um, cost center could be some kind of code that your purchasing department used to like an item group or something that they used to allocate some kind of cost reference to perhaps again is that your problem i don't know it depends where you work but you know you, you could have you know a l y for alloy dash you know purchased or something i i don't know i don't know mate. i don't know it's, it's just free text you can make of it what you want estimated cost this is manually typed in and uh it's not used that much it, it does have a good potential you know wouldn't it be great if you could you know type in the, the estimated cost of every model that you do so when you put them together in an assembly inventor tots it all up and you can see wow the whole bomb costs this much as far as i know inventor just can't do that I can't calculate and tally up costs last time i checked it might be different now i just haven't looked to be honest but uh yeah you can type that in again useful for adding you can add this as a column to your bill of materials or your parts list and then uh, that might just be useful for someone later down the line downstream uh the vendor this again is free text uh bmw so or something uh, alloy ink and then web link in there so this could be who you buy it from and uh their, their website status i uh, just leave that alone just don't even just don't even design state you got work in progress and pending just if you if you want if you need to manage released and work in progress life cycles use vault use vault work groups or vault professional don't don't use this this is nasty custom uh, right custom properties are very very useful this is an area where you can start adding your own value to i properties so yes you've got your standard your part number description revision letter blah 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 but if there's properties unique to your company then you can start putting them in here uh, and that can be literally anything if if this is something that's manufactured from you know like it's got a raw material code something like that you can type in here you know raw material code or whatever and then uh, value equals uh, xyz click add and then hit apply so that's now a custom property assigned to this model that can be edited at any point and that's now one two three is the you know that's now the new value of that property but these custom properties are only applied to this one model if you need to apply kind of company standards 
for custom properties what you'll have to do is browse to this folder here which is where your templates are explicitly open standard.ipt uh, and then go to the i properties of standard.ipt and then just type in all your custom i properties in here with blank values and then every time you start a new model you'll have a whole set of empty i properties custom i properties to start typing stuff into so that's a good way of utilizing custom i properties and the likes of vault other document management systems should be able to read these custom i properties and allow people to search on them later on save tab just again leave that alone physical this is where you can, if you want to, change the material of your model, as long with using the top drop downs here, you can change the material here. Uh, that'll rep, you know, you've got your density of the material, which, whichever material it is you pick, density will be shown down there. Uh, and then pff, you've got your, your mass, which is your, your overall weight of this single part. You've got the surface area, and then you've got the volume of the component as well. Uh, the calculator symbol there means that, that this is a true, accurate, uh, representation of how much this will actually weigh based on this material if you ever do like an override here if you someone was to ever type a number into there you know, that that'll change to a hand that means it's been physically changed by somebody's hand i think that's where they were going with that and if you think oh shit well how do i get it back uh, you just just delete all that out and hit update and it goes back to being calculated and then you've got your center of gravity xyz value yeah, yeah okay i think you get the point i think you get the point so that's i properties mate every model ever has i properties assemblies have i properties as well so if you go to the i properties of an assembly same again assembly can have a part number stock number description revision blah blah blah, blah all the same again custom i properties you can plug those into assemblies uh, and then when you go to place a part into an assembly so the wheel that we've just been working with let's place four of these in uh, one two three four we can go to the bill of materials tab go to for example parts only and you'll see that the i properties that were typed into this model have been pulled through in the bill of materials so there's your description there's your stock number there's your bombs uh, not bombs, there's your part number uh and yeah th that's where they start to appear downstream in other areas if you want to change the columns here this isn't a bill of materials tutorial but just click choose columns like if you don't use stock number you can just drag that off and then there you go there's your uh there's your i properties top tip though top tip if you've got 50 parts in an assembly and you forgot to type out the descriptions you can actually edit the descriptions straight from here so like for example if this wasn't the gds and this was the i don't know competition pack alloy wheel for example you can type that into, into the the bill of materials and that maps that value it back into the original model mate look at this they are it's written it straight back into there so you can start to edit all your eye properties in one place using your assembly bill of materials and then when it comes to creating a, an actual drawing place that onto the drawing sheet go to annotate and then parts list of that your eye properties are then pulled through and placed onto your parts list uh yeah there you go that's eye properties in a nutshell not really I don't, i'm thinking i cancel an 18 minute video i think this one this one might be kind of creeping <laughs> i can't i just can't do it i can't keep them short mate i can't uh, but yeah, there you go. There's I probably. Thank you very much. Hope that was useful. Uh, thank you to everyone that's supporting TFI on Patreon. And uh, thank you everyone to submitted to Render Wars as well. Render Wars is still going. I'm just trying to find time to, uh, to, to start on the third episode, which will be coming out soon. Uh, if you do want to support TFI, if you like what I do, look in the description of the video. There's, uh, there's an affiliate link for training courses on pluralsight may i've done some trick like full proper legit training courses on pluralsight there's a link in the description to sign up for a free trial where i'll get a little kickback if that's the way you want to support the channel uh alternatively you can donate on patreon which is also very much appreciated so thank you very much and i'll see you in the next one Toodle.